This is me, and I'm about to die in my nearly 1,000 day hardcore Minecraft world. But before I show you what happened, we need to go over what led up to this point, and it all started on day 900. This episode started out just like any other. I was planning on doing 100 days from day 900 to day 1000, and my main goal during these 100 days was to transform my end portal into something super cool looking. To get the blocks I needed for the build, I wanted to make a gold farm, then use that gold to make a piglin bartering farm. And the first thing I had to do to build the gold farm was to head to the nether and mine up 223 stacks of magma. And with my entire inventory filled up, it's time to fly back home and collect up the rest of the items that we need. The next item we need is a bunch of obsidian, and luckily I already have quite a bit. And I'll also be needing to buy a bunch of glass from these guys. And that's everything we need minus one item. And that last item is a bunch of turtle eggs. Hello, iron golems. And would you look at that? It's a pillager patrol. And here we go, the last two eggs. Now, we did just see the iron golems earlier, and I do have bad omen, so you know what that means. I'm gonna fly around here and see if I can get some of these pillager captions to spawn. Bad omen five, perfect, we have the max level. Now we'll fly over here and start a raid. And here they come. And the next wave just spawned and they're already dead. <laughs> all right, and that should just about do it to restock our hardcore world savers. And with my totems all restocked, it's time to fly home, head back to the nether, and find a place to build this farm, which I think right here should be perfect. Now we can start work on the farm. And the first thing we have to do is build up all the portals. And there we go, the outline for the portal is all done, and check it out, this is gonna be insane. Oh, and now it's on to the hardest part, which is placing all 223 stacks of magma. Alright, we have the first layer all done, and I have to repeat this 34 times going all the way up. And after quite a bit of work, I managed to get the outline of all 34 spawning platforms. And now the only thing I have left to do is fill all of this in with a bunch of magma. This is gonna be a while. And just like that, I have the entire tower all done, all 34 platforms. And now I have to find the coordinates that I marked down for the farm. And luckily, Frostwalker makes traveling on the ocean super easy. Now that we have the portal complete, it's time to start working on the collection system. There we go, it's all done. Then I can place all of my carpets and build a glass box around the entire thing. And there we go, it's all done. And now we can head back to our portal over here and head up to my AFK spot to try it out. All right, so it's been about an hour. Let's go down to see how much this farm has produced. And here it is. I wonder how much we have. Oh my gosh, it looks like we filled up almost every single chest. Now let me just get all these crafted into gold ingots. It took me almost an entire Minecraft day, but this is how much we got. An insane amount of gold. The gold farm was done, so I went back home to collect up the items I needed for the Piglin bartering farm. And here we go, everything we need for the bartering farm is all nicely packaged up into a single shulker box. Now to make things easier, I think I'm going to be building this farm right next to our gold farm. And the first thing we have to do is build a hopper clock. So I'm just going to have these two hoppers facing into each other. And then we just add a little bit more redstone off to the side like this. And that's the whole hopper clock system and gold delivery system done. And this chamber right here is where the piglins are going to be standing. And now all I have to do is build the item collection system. And now that we have this all done, we have to actually get these auto sorters configured. So I have to head home, grab myself some random junk items, and rename them so the item filter can work. I think this is a good name. Now that we have all of that, I can fly back over to the nether. We have to add all the item filters in like this. Okay, and just like that, the entire farm is all done. The only thing we have left to do is get 24 piglins into this little cage right here. All right, I think I have somewhat of a janky setup here. The piglins are going to run up here and chase me. I'm going to go under here, break this block, and then they're going to fall into the chamber. I don't know if it's going to work, but I guess we can go try it out. All right, it's kind of just a mixture of random blocks, and I'm going to turn on my shaders for this because I can see a lot farther with the shaders. Whoa, that looks so cool. Now I'm going to fly up here. Oh, here we go. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff spawning. I have piglins, yay! I cannot believe this is actually working. And, oh my gosh, come on. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been forgetting to name tag them, so they keep despawning. All right, we need to fly home and grab up 24 name tags. And I have all the name tags, and they're named after the top 24 people in my Discord server. So if you want to be a part of that, there's a link in the description. The shaders have come back on, and it's time to keep trying. All right, I have the last piglin right here, and hopefully I can lure him in without him dying. And I gotta be extra careful to not fall in here, because there's so many, and I think I would die. I'm gonna close this. And there we go, we have all of them inside. Now time to load up the farm with all of my gold. All right, and it actually took forever to get this all loaded up, but here it is, all loaded up, and it's time to test out the farm for the first time. I have no idea how this is gonna go. It looks promising. <gasps> it's working, oh my gosh. That is so cool. All right, it's been about 20 minutes and all of the gold is fully emptied out. Let's go see how much stuff we got. 
Oh my gosh, that is so much gravel. And I'll get it all loaded up. Now, what am I going to be using all this gravel for? Well, part of my plan for the end portal transformation is to make something that kind of looks like the void. And we're going to need lots of black concrete for that. As well as gravel, I also needed loads of sand. So I went to go find a desert. And okay, that was really easy, but <laughs> here we go. We have a desert. And there we go. That's almost five entire shulker boxes all filled up. And we're going to be needing loads of black dye, which, whoa, I have zero of. I guess I'm that rich that I can turn Wither Roses into black dye. Now I'll craft up as much as I can and load it all up into a shulker box. And after spending a bit more time crafting, I think five shulker boxes should be good. And we can always craft more if I ever run out. And now the only question left is how am I going to turn this all into regular concrete? And to do it, I'll be making myself a little concrete conversion farm. And here it is all done. We just place the concrete inside of here and then the observer detects it and spits out one more concrete powder and then it goes. After what seemed like way too long, I finally got all five shulker boxes of black concrete all converted. But before we go and gather up the rest of the items for this build, I'm going to gather up a load of gunpowder and craft up a bunch of TNT. Now that we have all the TNT in this shulker box, I'm going to head over to my end portal. And I want to start out by clearing out a massive room around the portal. All right, I think I have most of the portal room all rigged up with explosives. Now let's just mine down here real quick. Here it is. Oh my gosh, it looks really scary. <laughs> and here we go. Let's see how much damage it does. I'm scared. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh, that was huge. But even though it's this big, it's still not going to be big enough. And this is where I'm about to die. I wanted to clear out the rest of the area with a beacon and haste too to make it easier to place more TNT. So I went home to grab a beacon. But since I didn't have enough iron blocks for the beacon, I wanted to head over to the end to steal some iron blocks from the beacons I had over there. We're about 50 blocks short of having enough for a full beacon. So I think I know what I'm going to do. And that's going to be flying over to the end. Are you... What? How did that even happen? Oh my gosh. There must have been TNT that fell into the portal. Wow, that is probably the dumbest way to die in hardcore. Oh my gosh. Wow. And that's what happened. When TNT goes into an end portal in single player, it doesn't explode until the end dimension is loaded, and a player going through an end portal loads the dimension. So as soon as I went through the portal, the TNT exploded and killed me. As you can see in this shot, one TNT fell in, then slightly later, one more fell in. And if I play this back in slow motion, you can see one TNT explodes, pops my totem, then another TNT explodes, and that's what ended up killing me. Funny thing is, I wouldn't have died if I had my chest plate on, but hindsight is 2020. This was my first time ever playing hardcore Minecraft, so I I think 950 days survived is a pretty good start. This was also my first ever Let's Play series as well, and I learned so much. Season 2 of the Hardcore series is coming very soon, and it's going to be even better, so get subscribed so you don't miss it. But that's going to be all for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as I did. A bit sad that it ended so soon, but that's Hardcore Minecraft for you. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!